Assalamu alaikum. I am just starting this live session again, okay, because we were interrupted earlier. The topic was finding excuses for someone when they've done something. And I was trying to explain that having a good thought of someone when they've done something that's not criminal is actually an act of worship. It's a duty that you have, uh, you know, regarding someone else. For example, and I was giving this example, if you see a person uh, coming out of a pub, for example, the first thought that crosses your mind should not be a dirty one. And that's where we, a lot of us fail. The first thought we have is dirty, filthy. You know, you see someone, for example, helping a woman or traveling with a woman, etc. You don't have to think that they're, they're uh, in bed, you know. You don't have to think, astaghfirullah, that they're doing something haram. But the first line of thinking should be clean thinking. And if it doesn't concern you, you can forget about it and stop at that clean thinking and let it be. That's called husnuddhan, you know, to have the good perception of, of someone else. But if, for example, it concerns you, then you can take it deeper. You can actually find out and you can go a little bit deeper until you, you, you confirm whether it was actually that good intention or that goodness or it was something deeper. If it doesn't affect you and you happened to see another sign that proved to you beyond any doubt whatsoever that it was a bad thing, then it takes it to that level. But if there is any doubt whatsoever, we're taught that you need to give the person the benefit of that doubt. Remember this. You need to give them the benefit of that doubt. Now, like I say, this is not to cover up abuse. It's not to cover up criminal behavior. But it's generally when a person has done something that doesn't hold a lot of weight and it becomes gossip, it becomes evil thoughts, it becomes bad in terms of the way you're thinking of someone, then you need to rectify that. You need to correct it. It's my perception. When I see you say something, I shouldn't think the worst things, you know. Unfortunately, on earth right now, we love gossip and it's something juicy that we... We just want to spread. We want to be news breakers. So if you can't break the news, if you cannot break the news, you get bored and, and you start creating things and you start making mountains out of molehills. Now, that is terrible. It's not the quality of a believer. You need to know that as a believer, you don't have to break news. You don't have to start gossiping, talking about people and making it out that you're the person who knows the latest of everything that doesn't even concern you. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said the sign of a true submission of a person who calls himself a submitter is that he or she does not engage in that which does not concern him or her. They leave it. It doesn't concern me. It's gone. Uh, if you can help someone, you help them. If you cannot help them, leave them alone. Pray for them. Think good of them. But don't think bad of a person. So the narration that some people quote saying you need to find 70 excuses for someone, it's not a narration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's a statement of some of the scholars of a time. It's even taken back to some of the, the, the you know, the, uh, the great generations. But... Yes, what it means is that you need to think good of someone. You know, you do find an excuse for a person when it's not something criminal or abusive or hurtful, etc. Someone swears you and they keep swearing you and you say, oh, I must find 70 excuses. I must wait until they swear me 71 times. Then I can say, hey, no more excuse. That's foolish. Come on. So what you have to do is make sure that you have a make sure that you have a, a, a clean heart. And you look at others with that clean heart. Just like you would like someone to look at you with goodness, you need to look at them with goodness. The problem is, a lot of the times we do things without good intention. So therefore, we automatically look at others and think that they don't have the good intentions just because we would have been that bad way if it were us. Now, that's a weakness. That's a weakness. So to work on ourselves first and make sure that you have clean intentions, you will automatically believe that others have clean intentions as well. Very interesting, right? So this was just a clarification because people have been asking me about this uh, so-called hadith of finding 70 excuses. And they say, look, doesn't it cover up abuse? And isn't it that, you know, we would suffer if we kept on thinking good of people? No, if it's connected to your suffering, you don't even have to think any good. You need to tackle that. If someone swears you, abuses you, stolen your wealth, done something wrong to you, uh, usurps your rights and keeps on, uh, you know, exploiting you, you need to make sure you don't just look for excuses for that exploit. You deal with it. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. But if a person happens to be um, 
doing something else, you know, uh, you don't have to think the worst of them. Like I've given you one or two examples. There are a lot of other examples. You know, someone gets 100% in the exam. You don't have to think they cheated. Look for something and say, no, they worked hard, even though they don't normally get that result, but they've got it. If, if people have scored goals or played cricket and won, you don't have to think that there was match fixing. That's what we mean when we say, you know, think good, find a good excuse, think good about people. So they played it and they won. You know, people have a lot of money. Don't say that, they, that they're dealing in drugs. That's what people do. Or they're doing something illegal. It's not necessary that that's what happened. The first line of thought should be the cleanest line of thought. If after that it is proven beyond doubt that indeed they did something that was clandestine, in that particular case, you may then uh, you know, go to that level, like I said. But this, the moral of what I said this evening is... Let's think good about each other. Let's try and learn to love each other. Let's try and learn to think good things. Even if someone's made a mistake, are you going to correct them or are you going to make the matters worse? And this is why when I have a problem with someone, I promise you, if they're dear to me, even if they're in another city or country, I sometimes would travel to them, would listen them, uh, listen from them, hear them out, so to speak, uh, clarify, uh, maybe give them advice and let them know what I feel about it as a friend, as, as an acquaintance, someone who cares for them. And then I'd go back. That's it. That's Islam. The difficulty with us, we think the worst things. We remove people from faith based on something that we haven't even spoken to them about. We do, haven't clarified things. But that's, what ha that's what's happening. It's a disease. We claim that it's, it's part of what Allah has taught us and Allah ex uh, expects from us. But that's not true. We need to understand. If it affects you and if the, your right has been usurped, and you're being abused in that case, yes, indeed, you may want to claim that right, you may want to uh, question, etc. But if it's not concerning you, leave it alone. And if it is concerning the ummah at large, you may clarify it firsthand, not secondhand, never ever secondhand, firsthand clarification. If you're not prepared to make a firsthand clarification, you should not even comment. May the Almighty bless us all and may we be protected from the harm of our own tongues and our own systems because we do it to others, it's done to us and that way we're failing. May Allah bless you all. Shukran. Have a lovely evening for those of you who might be uh, where it is evening and those of you who are where it is morning, Australia and the likes. May Allah bless you with a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. And those of you who are still going to, you know, still having the afternoon of Saturday or the day of Saturday, America, uh, may Allah grant you blessings as well. In a nutshell, may we all be blessed. I mean, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah.